Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn de Guzman with INN. Occumetics Technology, a Canadian-based research and product development company, has just announced the completion of the animal study for its innovative Occumetics accommodating lens. It's a key milestone as the company progresses its product toward commercialization. And here to talk about what this recent milestone means for the company is Occumetics President and CEO Dean Burns. Hi, Dean. Hey, how are you, Marilyn? I'm good. So let's, I guess, start our conversation with just providing us a highlight of the, the highlights of the results of the animal study that you just announced. Absolutely. We are so excited about the uh, results of our animal study. So the study was a three-month study. Eight rabbits were the uh, subjects for the study. All the rabbits completed the 90-day milestone, which is really important to make sure that we don't have uh, any of the animals expired during that period of time. The results were extremely favorable compared to the available control that we use. And that uh, device is used extensively in cataract surgery today. So it's an FDA approved device uh, from a very large company that's used in cataract surgery. So that was our control. Uh, that we use. And the important thing was the results of it were extremely favorable. Now, why is that really important? Uh, Biocompatibility is the entry point basically into the FDA process. If you do not pass the biocompatibility threshold, chances of getting an FDA approval are slim to none. And the reason for that is biocompatibility is really the safety threshold for most materials or surgical devices. So for us, we were very comparable to what's currently available uh, in the uh, global market for cataract surgery. The the, um, process that we took the animals through are typical protocols that you would use for FDA type studies like this. And once again, as I mentioned earlier, our results were extremely favorable and we're pretty excited about that. So in addition to uh, biocompatibility with this animal study, are there other things that you were trying to achieve with the study and what were some of the outcomes as well? Yeah. So when you look at what we were trying to achieve, we had three goals going into the study. The very first goal was just to look at uh, uh, what we call post-surgical inflammation. And that is the tissue reaction to the uh, the foreign material being put in the eye. The second was uh, a clinical term that I'm going to use is called opacification. And that's typically associated with something being cloudy. But in this particular case, uh, it wasn't cloudy. It was just a fibric response to the uh, material being put in the eye. And then the last thing is we wanted to make sure that we passed the safety threshold so that we could actually go into our first in-human study which is slated for early 2024. So I guess my, this might be a good time to give our audience a little bit of um, a background of what your technology is and how it compares to existing um, product that's commercially available in the market now. Okay, thank you very much for that. First of all, Occumetics is a 17-year-old company. It's been around for 15 years just doing research in the interocular space. And for the last two years, we've been optimizing a lens that we have designed that we have now uh, passed the biocompatibility threshold. And now we're taking that into first in human. So we call it the OccuView lens. Um, And the OccuView lens uses what we refer to as the eyes biokinetic. Uh, And what biokinetics is, is the ability of the eye without you thinking or trying to do something to be able to see in distance, intermediate to read, say, your computer or near to read a book. And your eye does that automatically. You don't think about it. The brain and the eye work together to allow that to happen. Well, as you get older and you get into that 45 year uh, range of age, you enter into what we call presbyopia. And so the eye no longer has that ability to do that. Occumetics has come up with a unique lens design that takes advantage of how the eye naturally works so that we can give you distance vision, intermediate vision, and near vision 
without you really thinking about it because we're using some of the uh, eyes natural practices to do that. And we do it by, uh, we have two lenses that are part of our optical complex and sandwiched in between those two lenses is air. That's really important because when you look at the competitive landscape, most of the competitors are using silicone oil. Now, silicone oil is a good media to use. The only concern that we all have with silicone oil is it's basically toxic to the body if it escapes. And so we saw that with the plastics industry with uh, breast implants, silicone oil was leaking out and women were having trouble with that. And so we personally didn't think that was a good idea to put that in the eye. So what we use is two optical elements, a posterior and anterior element, and we have air sandwiched in between that. And then we use the uh, eye's normal biokinetics to actually make the, uh, the lens work. And so we're really excited about our technology going into the future. And when, you know, investors are, in, are obviously uh, considering or evaluating a company, they like to know, you know, the people behind the company. Maybe that's a, it's a good time to talk about some of the experts that you work with um, at Occumetics. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let, let me talk about myself for just one second. Uh, so I've spent almost 28 years in the eye care space, 40 years in total in healthcare. I retired uh, from Alcon Laboratories, which is the largest ophthalmic company in the world. And when I retired, I was running our cataract uh, business or part of our cataract business. And, and one of the things that I've had a pleasure of seeing is a lot of different technologies come into this space. Coming out of retirement, I looked at this technology and said, I have to be a part of this. This is the most exciting thing I've seen in the last 20 years. So that's why I actually came out of retirement. Why would investors want to work with a company like Occumetics? Well, first of all, we have 12 of the top uh, advisors in the eye care space giving us advice on which direction we should go with lens design, protocol development for our studies, and how we should even commercialize this technology. So we have 12 of the top around the world uh, that's part of that. Those individuals represent eight of the top medical research facilities in the world. So we've got the top investors working with our team of individuals. So myself and Dr. Saltine and our regulatory people, uh, if you put us all together, we probably got 130 years worth of ophthalmic experience just with the Occumetics leadership team, plus you add uh, double that with the, uh, with the investigators. But when you get beyond the team itself and you start looking at why would investors want to uh, look at this particular industry versus cardiology or other areas, number one, it's a very large dynamic market that everyone who turns age 45 now becomes a candidate for this technology. In the U.S., that's about 138 million people that have turned uh, 45, and that number just continues to grow. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, when you just look at the IOL category, which is the category that we participate in, that category is a $4.5 billion category. And so there is a lot of opportunity uh, financially within that category, and once again, Everyone who turns 45 now becomes a candidate for the OccuView technology. Uh, our technology, and this is based on what I know today, but our technology is the only one that I'm aware of that uses the natural eyes biomechanics to actually create a accommodative effect, which allows you to see up close, and a disaccommodative effect, which allows you to see further out. This is really important because uh, it, it's a safety issue if you think about how quickly that occurs. When you're driving your car and you're looking down the road and you have to look down at your dash or, 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 or maybe your console and you look back up, you want that to happen very quickly. I don't know about the other uh, competitors, but we do that in less than a second. That's a safety issue, and so we're pretty proud about that. So I think we're the only company that is working with the bio 
the, the eye's natural biokinetics. And then the very last thing is we have a large range of accommodative amplitude up to 14 diopters. And we've measured that uh, on the bench. Now, when we go into our multicenter clinical trial, we won't create a lens that has 14 diopters worth of accommodative effect because the eye won't like that. But our design has the ability to go that high should we need to. You mentioned uh, you're getting ready for your first inhuman uh, study in Q1 2024. So looking to the next year, uh, could you talk a little bit more about sort of what we're looking at in terms of in addition to that inhuman study after that, what happens in sort of the timeline? Yeah, so uh, we are excited to be gearing up for our first inhuman study, which uh, we have targeted to start uh, at the beginning of 2024. In that study, uh, we're going to have 15 subjects, and we'll have uh, the Occumetics lens in one eye, and we'll have a controlled lens in the other eye, uh, just doing a natural uh, comparison of the effects of the lens. And during this study, we're looking for performance. So we have already passed biocompatibility, bio so we know that the body can accept the material that we've put together with our eye, uh, lens design. We want to make sure that we can actually perform, and that performance is two things. One, we want to make sure that the patient's Rx, so their best corrected vision, is realized. If we don't do that, then it doesn't matter that we get accommodative effect. They just can't, the patient can't see well. So we want to make sure that the patient sees extremely well. The second thing is we want to make sure that we maximize whatever the accommodative effects that we can accommodate uh, with this technology. And so we can allow that patient to basically see like they did when they were 30 years old for distance intermediate and, and near. Uh, a, a couple other things uh, that we're looking to do is we want to complete our FDA pre-sub. That's a application that we have to complete with the FDA. And during that application process, we actually have the opportunity to ask very specific questions of the FDA so that when we do our study, we make sure that we address and answer the questions that they may have when they start uh, reviewing our PMA supplement at the end of the process. So we want to make sure that we engage the agency very nicely with that. Uh, in 2024, after we uh, start and complete the first in human study, it's a six-month study with some uh, level of follow-up, we will enter into our multi-center clinical trial application process which actually starts with a FDA document called an IDE, Investigational De uh, Device Exemption Application. We have to do that because this device is not approved for any kind of usage in the U.S. So first in human is going to be in the Dominican Republic. Uh, our first multicenter clinical trial uh, center will be a U.S.-based center. So there's some additional paperwork that we need to fill out, the IDE, uh, is that paperwork that we'll get approval from the FDA. They'll also review our six-month uh, first-in-human study, and they'll give us uh, whatever recommendation will come out of uh, that application review. And then we will begin our phase one uh, study for the multicenter clinical trial. We're hoping to start that first quarter of 2025. So we're already looking at our commercialization horizon with respect to this technology, as you may or may not be aware, the FDA process is a very well-defined process, so there's no way to accelerate the FDA process. It is what it is. So once you enter into, I call it FDA land, the timelines are very, very, very consistent. So it starts with biocompatibility and first in human. So with those two together, that's an 18-month process. Then when you start your multicenter clinical trial, that's three months. So the whole process can take a little less than uh, five years to complete. So when you look at our timeline, we're hoping to be uh, through the FDA process uh, by the middle to end of 2027. But we're also hoping to be uh, commercially available outside the U.S. before that time frame. So we don't have to fully wait until we have FDA approval to actually begin to sell this technology outside the U.S., we just have to achieve what's called a CE mark on the technology. 
And uh, to do that, we have to apply to the different ministries within the uh, com- countries that we want to sell in and get them to approve our technology. And they typically approve it after about the first uh, phase of the FDA process so that they can actually see what the data is telling them. So data is really important to us, and good data is what we are uh, working to achieve. We want to make sure that patients see well, and if we're advertising that they have the ability to accommodate, we want to make sure that they can accommodate based on what we're advertising. So uh, when you look at our value proposition of why we would want investors working with us, uh, number one, we designed a lens that will go through the normal standard incision that is used for cataract surgery today. So there's really no adjustment to a a surgeon's technique, nor will there be an adjustment to uh, what their learning is. It's just a matter of them understanding what our lens is uh, capable of doing. So that's number one. Number two is uh, the thing that I have, just harped on, and that is the uh, devices designed to give up to 14 diopters worth of accommodative amplitude. The uh, next thing is, you know, we can uh, accommodate and disaccommodate in less than a second, which is which is a safety issue. And the last thing is we have no silicone oil, so we don't have the uh, issues associated with if a seal breaks. Uh, oil spilling out into the eye. So we've got a very strong value proposition with our technology, and we're just looking forward to partnering with uh, organizations that are very futuristic in their thinking and very innovative in their way. So thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. And i um, hoping to uh, hear more about your uh, results of the study uh, in the coming months. All right. Thank you. And thanks everyone for watching. Join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insights. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss future updates and interviews. See you next time.